Chapter Five of Campfire Girls at Twin Lakes. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This reading by Lucy Burgoyne. Campfire Girls at Twin Lakes, or The Quest of a Summer Vacation, by Stella M. Francis, Chapter Five, Honors and Spies. Why couldn't this expedition be arranged so that we girls could all win some honors out of it? Ruth Hazelton inquired, after the details of Mrs. Hutchins' plan had been discussed thoroughly and the boat had been taken. That is a good suggestion," said Miss Ladd. What kind of honors would you propose, Ruth? The latter was silent for some minutes. She was going over in her mind the list of home craft, health craft, camp craft, hand craft, nature law, business and patriotism honors provided for by the organization, but none of them seemed to fit in with the program of the proposed secret investigation. I don't think of any, she said at last. There aren't any, are there? No, there are not, the guardian replied. But now is the time for the exercise of a little ingenuity. Who speaks first with an idea? I have one, announced Ethel Zimmerman eagerly. Well, what is it, Ethel? Miss Ladd inquired. Local honors. Replied the girl with the first idea. Each campfire is authorized to create local honors and award special beads and other emblems to those who make the requirements. Under what circumstances is such a proceeding authorized? Was Miss Ladd's next question. When it is found that local conditions call for the awarding of honors. Not provided for in the elective list. Do such honors count for anything in the qualifications for higher rank? They do not, Ethel answered, like a pupil who had learned her lesson very well and felt no hesitancy in making her recitation. What kind of honor would you confer on me if I exhibited great skill in spying on someone else? Asked Helen Nash in her usual cool and deliberate manner. A problematical smile lit up the faces of several of the girls who caught the significance of this suggestion. Miss Ladd smiled too, but not so problematically. You mean to point out the incongruity of honors and spies, I presume? The guardian interpreted, addressing Helen. Not very seriously, the latter replied, with an expression of dry humor. I couldn't resist the temptation to ask the question, and, moreover, it occurred to me that a little discussion on the subject of honors and spies might help to complete our study of the problem before us. Do you mean that we are going to be spies? Violet Monday questioned. Why? Of course we are, Helen replied, with a half twinkle in her eye. I don't like the idea of spying on anybody and would rather call it something else, said Marie Crismore. First, someone calls us detectives, and then somebody calls us spies. What next, ah?、Uh? Why don't you like to spy on anybody? asked Harriet Newcomb. Well, Marie answered hesitantly, You know that there are thousands of foreign spies in this country trying to help our enemies in Europe, and I don't like to be classed with them. That's patriotic, said Helen, the twinkle in her eyes becoming brighter. But you must remember that there are spies and spies, good spies and bad spies. All of our law enforcement officials are spies in their attempts to crush crime. Your mother was a spy when she watched you as a little tot, 
stealing into the pantry to poke your fist into the jam. That is what Mrs. Hutchins suspects is taking place now. Someone has got his or her fist in the jam. We must go and peek in through the pantry door. Oh, if you put it that way, it'll be lots of fun, Mari exclaimed eagerly. I'd just like to catch em with their fists all, all smeared. She brought the last word out so ecstatically that everybody laughed. I'm afraid you have fallen into the pit that I warned you against, Miss Ladd said, addressing Mari. You mustn't start out eager to prove the persons under suspicion guilty. Then we must drive out of our minds the picture of the fists smeared with jam, deplored Mari with a playful pout. I fear that you must, was the smiling concurrence of the guardian. Very well. I'm a good soldier, said Mari, straightening up, as if ready to shoulder arms. I won't imagine any jam until I see it. Here comes Hazel, cried Julietta, and everybody looked in the direction indicated. Hazel Edwards had taken advantage of this occasion to go to her aunt's house and thence to the city Red Cross headquarters for a new supply of yarn for their army and navy knitting. As she emerged from the timber and continued along the edge of the woods toward the site of the camp, the assembled campers could see that she carried a good-sized bundle under one arm. "'She's got some more yarn, and we can now take up our knitting again,' said Ethel Zimmerman, who had proved herself to be the most rapid of all the members of the campfire with the needles. Although the business of the meeting was finished by tacit agreement, those present decided not to adjourn until Hazel arrived and received official notice of what had been done. I'm delighted with your decision, Hazel said eagerly, and, do you know, I believe we are going to have some adventure. I've been talking the matter over with Aunt Hannah and she has told me a lot of very interesting things. But when do you want to go? We haven't discussed that yet, Miss Ladd replied. I suppose we could go almost any time. Let's go at once, proposed Marion Stanlock. We haven't anything to keep us here, and we can come back as soon as, as soon as we find the jam on somebody's fist. This figure of speech called for an explanation for Hazel's benefit. Then Ruth Hazelton moved that the campfire place itself at Mrs. Hutchins' service to leave for Twin Lakes as soon as she thought best, and this motion was carried unanimously. I moved that Catherine Crane be appointed a committee of one to notify Mrs. Hutchins of our action and get instructions from her for our next move said Violet Monday. Second the motion, said Azalea Atwood. Question, shouted Harriet Newcomb. Those in favour say aye, said Miss Ladd. A hearty chorus of ayes was the response. Contrary-minded no. Silence. The ayes have it. The meeting adjourned. End of chapter 5